10 Terrifying True Stories, Volume 6. Let's react to this. Alright, Night Riders, I have finally reached the ending of the True Stories. This is Volume 6, entitled 10 Terrifying True Stories. Um... This has been awesome, by the way. Happy Halloween, everyone. If you guys haven't been able to tell, I'm rocking the old shirt that was released when the Connect very when the Connect first came out, titled I Am the Controller. So let's see the last of these true stories. Well, that was creepy. I lived on a farm ranch with my grandparents. My parents kicked me out, and I couldn't afford to rent an apartment, so they let me stay with them for a fraction of the cost. I slept in a bedroom on the first floor. The smell of old people was much more pungent in this room. It was littered with my grandma's religious relics. I had to deal with a giant painting of Jesus staring at me while I slept. Oh, that's Weird creepy. things didn't start actually happening until my second week of living there. I got home from my job working at a small corner store in town, and by then it was dark out. While unlocking the front door, I could hear footsteps out in the crops. I had to assume there was somebody trying to steal my grandpa's produce. I tiptoed closer to get a better look, making sure to stay away from any fallen leaves or anything that could make some noise. Smart. There was indeed somebody in the crops, but they were crawling on all fours, as if sneaking around. I could have confronted them, but that might have ended in trouble. So I went back inside to wake my grandpa. Smart. He went outside screaming like a madman with his rifle in hand. It was something along the lines of, If I ever catch you here on my farm, I won't hesitate to blow your brains out. That seemed like more than enough to scare anyone off the property. But the next night, while asleep, things got stranger. I woke up and heard laughing outside my window what <laughs> there was somebody standing there looking into the bedroom he seemed to notice me as i sat up and he walked away i told my grandpa again this time he was really pissed he stomped to his closet pulled out his rifle and stomped over to the front door with me right behind him this time when he opened the door something immediately grabbed a hold of his leg causing him to trip I jumped onto the hostile, taking him down easily as he was already in a crouched position. Mm -hmm. My grandpa managed to get up, grabbing his gun and pointing it at the guy. I called the sheriff while grandpa had the guy at gunpoint. I suddenly heard a scream while on the phone. It was my grandpa. I dropped the phone almost with tears in my eyes, fearing the worst had happened. I got to the stoop and grandpa was on the ground with his hand on his nose. He was bleeding. Someone else had come along, shoved him to the ground, and punched him in the nose before taking off. I wish I'd gone after those sickos with a gun. Oh. Who punches an elderly man in the face? For real. In the end, the sheriff arrived for nothing, and my grandpa stole the camera system aimed towards the crops. That's crazy. Last month, I got home late one night after hanging out with my sister, brother-in-law, and a few of their friends. I walked up to the stoop and saw my mom left a note on the door telling me to take out the garbage cans to the front. I made a point of being really quiet since mostly everyone was asleep by that time. When I got to the side of our house by the garbage cans, I could hear voices coming from our backyard. I took a peek over the top of the fence. There were two people standing by our patio table. I was freaked out, you could understand why. I had to run inside to tell my mom. My dad doesn't live with us, otherwise I would have gotten him. We only made it out her bedroom door when we noticed the two people from the backyard coming up the steps. I shoved my mom to the window, basically forcing her to jump out onto the tiny ledge below. I somehow got her to do so, and while hopping out myself, the two intruders entered the room. I only caught the briefest glimpse of them before hopping down to the ledge myself and then down to the grass. 
me and my mom booked it to the neighbor's house. Two weeks later, when we had just started to move past the incident, the sound of the phone ringing at 3 a.m. woke me. It kept ringing nonstop. It didn't go to voicemail. My mom got up after, like, the tenth ring. We looked at each other and let it be. The phone rang for another good ten minutes straight until my mom finally yanked the phone cord out of the modem. We slept with it off that night. I was sure it had something to do with a break-in. Two weird things like that don't happen so close together without them being linked somehow. Facts. The next day, my mom got a text message on her phone. It said... Why didn't you pick up? This was only a week ago, and we're still shitting ourselves, worrying when the next incident might happen. That's crazy. A 14-year-old girl was asleep in her room on a school night when she apparently woke and remembered that she had homework to do the next day that she didn't even start. She flicked her light on and began to work on it. The clock read exactly 1.15 a.m. Over the sound of pencil at pushing onto the paper, there were faint noises coming from inside the walls. She stopped writing, and the sounds became more clear. It was as if something was being pushed from inside the walls. There was a storage space right next to her bed, with a big square door that comes off the wall to enter. The girl started screaming for her mom, and the noises suddenly became exaggerated, as if something were running in there. The door to the wall popped off, and a figure emerged. The girl's mother and father could hear the screams even through three closed doors. When the girl's father came to the room, he found a tall and overweight white man covering the girl's mouth with his hand. What? The fight was over in a matter of seconds, with a few good punches to the man's gut. Two pairs of the girl's underwear were found in the man's pocket before he was arrested. Oh... Me and my wife were spending the night together in Cedar Beach. Unfortunately, the place closes at 9.30, and the place was miles from basically anywhere. So we were pretty much stuck with nothing to do at the beach at 9.30 at night. So we just took a walk through the wet sands until 10. For the first half of the walk, we didn't see a single person on the whole beach. Then we turned around to head back. About 20 feet into us walking back in the direction we came, we both picked up on something. There were more than two pairs of footprints in the sand. Ours were more washed away by then, but there were two other sets of footprints that weren't there before. That's These creepy. a little more recent. They seemed to set off up away from the wet sand where there would be no more footprints. You may think it was just another couple taking a late night stroll, you would think. but we hadn't seen anyone for the good mile or two we walked, so we were spooked. I used the flashlight app on my iPhone to scan around the nearby dunes. Smart. I even went as far as calling out asking if somebody was there. I told my wife to wait there while I headed over to the garbage pails. It seemed like the only place somebody could be hiding. It was clear. I shined the light further down, revealing a tunnel that probably led to a parking lot. I moved closer until I could actually see a little into the tunnel, and as soon as I could, I shut the light off. There were two things in there. I don't even know if I should call them humans, because from what I saw, they looked like hunched, naked creatures huddled in there. They had skin to match that of a medium, dark-skinned Caucasian, but with much more flaky, wrinkly skin. I didn't mutter a word. I just stomped through the sand to my wife, pulling her with me as we ran back in the direction of the car. We made it back to the car in about five minutes, completely out of breath. We got in the car, and I finally explained what I saw to my wife. She looked at me like I was crazy, and she still does. But can you blame her? I'm sure you're not even taking this seriously. I reported my sighting to the proper authorities the following day, and have been coming back to the beach at night once a week to try and find the creatures once more. He's wilding. Wow, I, I would have never went back to that beach. Local high school. Fuck that. I would 95% of the time be the only one working the night shift because there wasn't really a need for more than one. I always start with the downstairs classrooms and work my way up to the upstairs classrooms. The cafeteria, gym, auditorium, nurse's office, 
Those were all responsibilities of the morning and afternoon guys. So since I was always alone, I would commonly have a bunch of radios sitting around the hallways playing loud music, like I did this one night. The upstairs of the school was shaped like a U rather than an O, so to go around to the other side, there was only one way. Oh, I was boy. mopping the floor in one of the social studies classrooms when I noticed from all the way across the other side of the school, the lights to one of the classrooms turned on. I don't mean it was left on. I always shut the lights to every room I wasn't in. I mean the lights turned on. I stood there with chills running through my body. There was somebody walking over to the window. They stopped and stared straight over to me through the window. It was the most disturbing thing I had ever witnessed. No. I didn't know what to do. Confront them? Run away? Call the police? I got closer to the window. It was... It was somebody who looked like they were in their 30s or 40s. He had black hair, and I couldn't see a lot of facial hair. He raised his hand and began slowly waving at me. That's creepy. I pulled creepy. the blinds to the room shut and tried to catch my breath tried to sort out my options. When I lifted the blinds back up, the light from the room across the school was off. My heart went back into panic mode. He was surely on his way over to this classroom. Right then, the option to run seemed best, yep. and so I did. Smart. I ran down the stairs and out the back door of the school, not giving a second damn about anything but me and my life. There you go. Security cameras revealed that sometime in the night, the man emerged from the basement of the school and began wandering around. Getting a closer look at his face, I could see just how disturbed it made me feel. He was not a pleasant looking man. The creepiest thing though, was the camera revealed him going back down into the basement and never coming out. What? He was never found down there though, which makes me question if there's some hidden rooms or exits down there. Lately, Doing this job has never been more terrifying. The author of the story you just heard. Damn, I didn't read all of it. I used to work as a house cleaner when I was a 17 year old guy trying to save up for college. The person I worked for the longest was a man named Jeffrey. I only spoke with him once when I met him and a few times in between when he came home early from his job. That was it. I couldn't tell you if he seemed normal or not. He had a very serious rule, though, not to go into his basement. He even left a big sign on the door. The curiosity ate away at me, but I did my best not to sneak any peeks. So one day, while I was dusting the furniture in his room, I, don't understand I why people got just a little don't listen. snoopy and started going through his drawers. Don't ask me why. In his bigger drawers, there was just a bunch of clothing. I started going through the smaller drawers, and found things like cameras, batteries, photo albums, and various knickknacks. Same thing in the middle drawer, but in the bottom one, I found a small wooden box sitting perfectly in the corner. It needed a key to open it, but I had actually taken notice to a small key that had been hanging on his key ring in the kitchen. It looked like it could fit in this lock. When I tried it, surely enough, the key twisted in the socket. It's one nosy motherfucker. <laughs> what I found was disturbing. There was a pile of black and white photos. The first ones were just pictures of the house. But then eventually, I was in every single photo, in every single room of the house, including the bathroom. The most disturbing picture was a colored one that stood out from the rest. It was taken from outside one of the windows, aimed to me when I was in the kitchen. I put the pictures back in the box, except for a select few to use as possible evidence for something that I feared might happen. I locked it back up and put it in the drawer. I left everything else in the bedroom as is. I was about to leave the house and never return when I passed the basement door. Now that I wasn't coming back, I figured I should check out the basement so that the curiosity wouldn't forever eat away at me. I stepped inside and flicked the lights on. The air down there smelled really bad, like rotting animals. There were weird posters on the walls a lot of erotic ones. I was shocked to even see some with boys and girls that looked under 18. There were two doors leading to either rooms or closets. I didn't go into them. 
but the horrid smell was the worst by those two doors. I finally realized there was a buzzing sound whenever I moved. I noticed in the corner there was a ceiling camera pointing right at me. Oh. But after noticing it, it seemed to stop moving completely. That was my cue to get out of that house. I drove home to safety. Jeffrey tried calling me one time after this. I didn't pick up. He didn't leave a message. I'm glad I never gave him my address. Oh. I was getting off from work at Stop and Shop after doing the midnight shift. Yeah. Me and the only other guy working at the time went to our cars. A black pickup truck pulled up next to us. There was a man and woman inside. They looked like dirty hillbilly rednecks. The guy had a mustache and a beard with a cap on and a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. The woman had dirty looking hair. Then again, her whole face looked dirty. When they stopped in front of us, blocking our path, the guy sitting inside asked us if we have any spare change for gas. My co-worker dug through his pockets and dropped two quarters in the man's hand. I handed him a dollar in hopes that he would just drive off. The guy looked at the money in his hand, then looked back at us. I'm going to need more than that, he said. We apologized and told him that that's all we had. Bullshit, he said. I could see my co-worker was getting just as nervous as I was. The woman in the passenger seat had a devilish looking smile on her face. I walked around their car and speed walked to my car, as did my co-worker. I could see the man was spinning his pickup truck around. I turned the car on and immediately put it in drive and sped out of the parking lot. They seemed to be following me at first, but I eventually lost them. I pulled into a gas station and texted my co-worker to make sure he was alright. He texted back saying he was fine. I wish it ended there, but a pair of headlights entered the gas station. It was the pickup truck. I got back in my car. He tried to block me by pulling up in front of me. The woman in the car pulled a gun and started to lower the window. I yanked it in reverse right out of the parking lot. My back window cracked as it was hit by a bullet. Oh. I somehow managed to lose them once more and make it home alive. I found two more bullet marks on my car. It's so scary to think how close I was to dying. And for what? Unfortunately, there are so many messed up people in this world. Damn. Me and Andrew, my half-sister's cousin, were 18 years old at the time. We decided to go exploring in the abandoned asylum in our town. It was way past dark. There were no cars on the road, so it was probably after midnight. Why? Andrew drove. We Why? both brought our video cameras in hopes to catch some interesting footage. YouTube was only two or three years old at the time, and exploring abandoned places was a pretty big thing for YouTube videos back then, yeah. so we thought it would be cool. We had to crawl under a hole in the fence that someone else had cut. We both brought along flashlights, of course. We got in through one of the broken windows. There were a few planks on the floor by the window that had once been planked up against the window to prevent anyone from entering. We began our search, both flashlights on, along with Andrew's camera which had night vision capabilities. There was nothing but broken glass and graffiti everywhere. There were a few cracks and holes in the wood floors that led to blackness below. We didn't dare shine our lights down there. We both shared a few laughs, but... I was creeped out as hell in there, and I knew he was too. The place was huge. We ended up in a small room with a dental chair and other equipment. It was strangely unsettling. The most unsettling room upstairs, however, was the bathroom. When we were in there, we heard a constant dripping sound coming from one of the stalls. When we tried to open it, it was locked. The opening at the bottom was far too small to crawl through, so we just left that room in a hurry, very creeped out. Mm -mm. Behind one door, we found a stairway leading upstairs or downstairs. We wanted the video to be as scary as possible, so of course, like two teenage guys would, we went downstairs. Of course you did. There was a new set of hallways, much more creepy now that we were underground. There was a bulletin board on the wall with a bunch of old photos and news articles on it. Me and Andrew were checking that out when a metallic thud came from down the hall. We shined our lights over in that direction, just in time 
to see what we were sure was a forehead moving from the hallway into one of the rooms. Andrew started screaming as we ran back in the direction we came. Now, I would have just thought it was a homeless person or something, but as we were stomping up the stairs, a single flight below us, we could hear steps following us. At this point, I was screaming too. The feeling of being in the back was horrifying. I felt that at any moment, I would be grabbed from behind and dragged down the stairs. But we made it back to the main hall and down to the window that we entered from. We made it outside and could hear through the window the door to the stairway opening from down the hall. We got to Andrew's car as fast as we could and drove off, never looking back. Nope. See? Nope. People we were a young couple that had just moved into a new house. We had a bedroom on the first floor. The house had an upstairs, a middle floor, and a den. No basement. At night, we started hearing strange noises coming from below us. I checked under the bed. Nothing was there. The sound seemed to be coming from beneath the floor, but the house didn't have a basement, so it didn't make sense. We started to notice things were different in the morning, like certain doors were opened that we were sure had been shut the previous night. My wife's closet door always seemed to be open. We made sure to shut all the windows one night just to make sure it wasn't some kind of draft. The doors were all open the next morning. We had decided that it had gone far enough. The next night, we both stayed up, listening and waiting. The noises coming from below were louder than ever. Sounds like things being pushed around, moaning. I headed down to the den and put my ear against the wall, listening for where the sound may be coming from. It was coming from inside the wall I was up against, but a little lower down, below the den. I went back to my wife. I told her we had to stay up for as long as possible and see what happens. We stayed up until around two. My wife started to drift off, and I guess I had shortly after. Not I me. woke to my wife shaking me, silently crying to herself. She pointed at her closet, which had been opened. There was some kind of hidden door propped open in her closet. It led down into the floor. I hopped out of bed and shined a light down there. It was a ladder, leading far down to some hidden room. I had my wife lock the door and call the police while I took my machete with me down into the secret room. At least he had a machete. When I got to the bottom, I found a light switch. The room had a table and chair, a small cot in the corner, and a bunch of toys scattered across the room. A scream came from upstairs. It was my wife. Somebody was trying to break down the door. I climbed up the ladder the best I could while holding the machete. By the time I got up there, they had already kicked in part of the door. They stuck their head through a hole in the door and looked at me. He was a dirty looking man. I saw a craze in his red eyes. He must have seen my machete because he ran straight out the front door. Oh. I don't know what the room is for. Maybe some kind of old bomb shelter or something. But I don't know who the hell that man was. How the hell he got down there. And how long he's been down there. Oh. I was 27 years old, moving out to live with my girlfriend in an apartment. It wasn't the fanciest place ever, as we weren't the wealthiest couple ever. But it was fine for us. The first night in, we already hated the neighbor. There was yelling and thumping going on all night. It was like they didn't sleep all night. My girlfriend wanted me to go over. I told her if it continued the next night, I would go over. We didn't hear anything of them throughout the day while setting up furniture. But when night came and we were trying to get some sleep, the freakish yelling and banging resumed, sometimes even bangs on the wall. I decided to draw the line and confront them. I knocked on the door, and a middle-aged albino woman answered the door. Her voice was raspy as if she had been smoking cigarettes for the past 40 years. Wow. I politely asked her to quiet down. She told me to back off and mind my own business before slamming the door in my face. The noises and yelling only got louder after this. My wife said we should report them. I went to the front desk the yeah, following day, the bringing up the couple that lives in that apartment. The doorman looked puzzled. He told me that only a woman named Kathy lived there. Her husband passed away five years ago. She was written down as only being one person in that room, so she was breaking a rule of the apartment building. 
The doorman went to go check out the room. The woman let him search the apartment. He came back to tell me that she was all alone in there, which seemed so odd. He did, however, ask her to keep it down. I thanked him and went back to the room. It seemed it had worked, as there weren't any sounds that night. I woke to see somebody standing by our bed. Anna? I whispered. My wife turned next to me. She was in the bed. The familiar wow. raspy voice at the end of the bed said we shouldn't have reported her. I screamed and fumbled for the light switch. My wife started screaming even louder. By the time I turned on the lamp, she was gone. What? I slipped on my shoes and ran out into the halls in my robe looking for her. Her apartment door was open, but she wasn't in there. Where could she have gone so fast? Nothing was heard of Kathy for a whole week. Before one night, there were four loud knocks on our walls. Not thumps like the previous noises. These were actual knocks, meant to get our attention. We moved out a day later. Hell yeah! <laughs> Yo! What the fuck? What the fuck? Alright, y'all. That, that's it. That is the end of the true stories. That was volume 6. So, Night Riders. Post your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the 10 terrifying true stories, volume 6. And also, let me know which one you thought was the most terrifying story for you. To me, it was the one where the couple... Apparently had like a secret door into the closet where this dirty man was living down there. Like, yo. Oh, boy. Oh, man. These, these true stories are seriously something else. Seriously. All right, y'all. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed these true story series. And it got you hyped, and it got you nervous, and it got you scared for Halloween. Enjoy your Halloween, guys. <laughs> Continue to comment, like, and share. But if this is your first time checking out myself or the channel, become a Night Rider by hitting the subscribe button. And join us on our journey to 5,000 subscribers. So until next time, ride or die, Night Riders. And happy Halloween.